This is a tutorial video overviewing the submission made for the Herox Cognitive Computing Challenge. I'm going to start with a fresh installation of Ubuntu 14.04. Uh, the fresh installation has all the updates installed and we're going to have two zip files. One is the documents to be converted, a set of PDFs, and the other is our supplied submission, the infrastructure processing.zip. The first thing I'm going to do is make a directory called PDFs and copy the, the documents into that. And then in that directory, I'll extract the, the zip file. And then I'm going to remove the zip file so that this directory now has just PDFs in it. The next task I'm going to do is extract the infrastructure processing submission file. And now I have two new folders, one of which I care about, the infrastructure processing directory. I'm going to run sudo bash infrastructure processing slash install dot sh. This is a shell script which will install a set of packages necessary to set up the environment for the remaining uh, of the video. So it's going to install uh, a couple of Python packages, one being pip, which will be useful for installing Python libraries, the other being the Redis server. And then we'll use wgit to install a PDF miner package from the internet as well as the Redis desktop server. So the, the speed of this depends on the speed of your connectivity for the internet. There shouldn't be too much interactivity here at this point. We're just monitoring the, the status of the script. The purpose of this video is to show that the script does work as expected without any errors um, and to sort of demonstrate the capability of the query script. The Redis Desktop Manager has uh, it's a Debian package that we download from the internet and to resolve the dependencies we make an attempt which fails and then retry after installing the dependent packages and then it works. So at this point the installation is finished. There's two new, uh, uh, one directory called PDF Miner which is the extracted package and installed and then the other is a Debian package for Redis Desktop Manager. Now we're going to enter into the infrastructure processing directory. We just ran the install.sh script and the instructions are in the install uh, file in case the shell script does not work out. The next thing that we need to do is specify where the PDFs were in the configuration input file. So if you remember those were in home and then my username downloads PDFs. So this can be a path to where the content is. So we're going to edit that config file with the correct path. Home username downloads PDFs. And we need a trailing slash in there to make sure our scripts understand that it's a path. Now we're ready to run the first of four scripts. The first script is called extract pictures and create txt from pdf. So I'll run that as a Python script. This script has three stages. The first is to extract the pictures from the pdfs. The second, which just started, iterates through all of the available pdfs and creates a new directory, as we can see here, and extracts the, the content of the PDFs as a text file using the library PDF2Text with the number 2. So that's one of the two Python libraries that we're going to run against the PDFs to get the content. 
So this is PDF2 text is a standard Python library. Uh, and we're just using it to convert the PDF into a plain text file. I'll show you what the output of these Python libraries is afterwards. This takes a few minutes depending on the speed of your computer and the number of files that you've supplied. Right now it's running as a serial process. To speed the uh, extraction of content up, we could parallelize the extraction script, but we decided not to at this point because we want to make sure that we get a score for the submission in the first place. Our understanding is that if we submit and get scored uh, on our submission, then we can go back and resubmit an improved solution that may be faster or more reliable and get an improved score. So at this point, we're just taking things pretty straightforward using serial processes and regular expressions to extract content. So the, the third step in this, so the first was extracting pictures, the second is a PDF number two text library, and the third PDF TO text is a very fast library. And then after, after those uh, three extractions run, I'll show you the contents in the content extracted from PDF directory. All right, this is the third stage. All right, that was pretty fast. And so now I'm gonna, so nothing new is in this directory, but I'll show you what the contents of the new set of, con new extracted content is. So under PDFs, same, same place where we had our files, but now we have a new directory called content extracted from PDFs. In that directory, we have a one directory per input PDF. And if we look at what the content of that folder is, that folder contains the image associated with each PDF, the original PDF, as well as two new files. One is called PDF2.txt, and one is called PDF2.txt. And these are the extracted content from the original PDF. So the next thing that we're going to run against the, the extracted text files is a set of two Python scripts, one for each of the libraries. So we'll run Python PDF2 text, and this will take a little bit of time. What it's going to do is uh, create a new Redis database, uh, set that up, and then extract the content from the text file, place the content into the Redis database. The series of regular expressions are parsing the text file to create key value pairs, which then get loaded into Redis. So again, this is just iterating over each of the PDF folders uh, over the text file in that. Again, this the content extracted by the regular expressions may not be perfectly correct or reliable, but uh, depending on how well we score, we can go back and improve the, the search uh, methods to see if we can get more reliable uh, answers from the extracted content. Alright, so that one's finished. Now we're going to run the other uh, content extraction. We do PDF to text in the Redis. This is just running uh, another set of regular expressions against this content.
content into load, loaded into Redis with a set of key value pairs. Now at this point, we could run the query script. That'd be the last step, but in, first to verify, and this is just a check, to validate that the content really is in the Redis database, we can say Redis desktop manager, and this will just visually validate the fact that our content is loaded into the Redis database. So this is our connecting to the Redis database that is already running in the background. Let's say localhost. And then we'll say test connection just to make sure we connected. We are successfully connected, so we're done. So for each of the files, now we have a set of entries that are key value pairs for that file. So if we look at each of these, they're a little bit different because sometimes things are found in one document that are not found in another. But each of the um, original PDFs has now been converted into its own separate uh, Redis schema. So this is just to ver verify the fact that we have a set of content in a database. To get to actually enter the queries, we've written this Python, this, uh, Python script called query entry. And we run that, now we get two choices. The first choice is to run the questions that were supplied as part of the challenge specification, and the second choice is to create a new question. So just to, I'll do both. I'm going to start with the first one. I'll start with provide the address of all the homes in British Columbia that were valued over $4 million with a waterfront view and four bedrooms. So we'll default to one. And there it shows what we chose as number one, what we would have supplied if we had created our own query. It's province equals British Columbia price greater than $4 million has waterfront and bedrooms equals four. So the result of that is a set of property IDs associated with the original document PDF. So you, again, you can go through and do this for any of the predefined questions by just rerunning that Python script and getting back to this menu. I'm going to enter a new query that hasn't, but that hasn't been predefined. Uh, so we're going to select two at this point, and we're going to construct a query from defined fields. So we'll go with the default, and then I'm going to choose a city. So we'll go with number three, and the city is going to be equal to it's one, and Kalawana, Kalawana is the name of the city. So that's our sort of first query structure. Now I could say I'm done, I just want to find all the values and the, all the properties associated with that city, but I'm going to add another query constraint. So I'm going to go with two. And I'm going to say that the, we're going to use a predefined field again, which is price. And I want the price to be greater than, that's three, four million dollars. One, two, three, one, two, three. So now I have a query that says, find me the properties in the city Kilowana with a price greater than $4 million. So now we're finished. So we'll say one. I'm going to say, I want to find the number of bathrooms that are in this city. So show me all the bathrooms, or all the, the bathroom counts associated with the city Kalawana with a price greater than $4 million. So I'm going to choose 18 here. And I see that I get back a set of property values, property IDs. And then for each of the ID tags, so let's say uh, 1009514, that property has five bathrooms. And as a, as a validation, if we look back in the Redis database, we can check that out. And then we'll also verify that it shows up in PDF. So back in 40, if we look at the bathrooms, So bathrooms five, so that's what was in the Redis database. So that's all the content that was extracted from the PDF and we can see that it has five baths. And to really validate this, we'll just look back one more level at the original PDF. So to do that, we'll do
instance, we need a PDF viewer. It's already installed, so we'll say events, downloads, and PDFs, and is a uh, Nine five one zero four. So we'll take a look at that PDF. We'll zoom in a little bit. So here we see that there are five bathrooms in this house. So that's our submission. We'd appreciate getting a score back or any feedback on uh, the quality of this submission.